It has been probably about a year and a half since my last speech for various reasons. So I thought today I would incorporate speech number one with the speech that I'm giving today, which is speech number seven, researching the subject. Because a lot of the people that are here today haven't heard me talk before, at least in this <clears throat> context. So I titled the speech, <coughs> What Do You Want to Do When You Grow Up? <clears throat> I was really hoping that Jason would be here today because I was going to use him as an example. I'm sure that Jason <laughs> would be <laughs> Jason Dunman. <Dunbar. laughs> My apologies. Jason Nunley knew at a very early age what he was going to be. We all know Jason, the salesperson. I can imagine a conversation at about six months with his mother went something like, Mother, I will sell you this bag of dirty diapers for just one more hour of breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you knew what you were going to do when you grew up? Grew up. Did you know at an early age, Neil? No. I didn't know last week. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, did you know? You assume we've grown up. Some of us are still the science. <laughs> yes. That's the situation I find myself in. <clears throat> I'm still deciding. When I was in high school, I thought I knew for sure what I wanted to do when I grew up. I went from Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, out to Utah. My parents put me on a train in Paoli and said, call us in a week. I was 17 years old, and off I went. I, was, I loved the outdoors, and I was going to major in wildlife management. Utah State was one of the best colleges, universities in the country for forestry and wildlife management. This is what I was going to do. Four years later, when I graduated in fashion merchandising, <laughs> I knew exactly what I was going to do. <laughs> I was going to go to Hollywood and work in the movies doing costume. However, I got married, went back east. <clears throat> I got a job at a television station as a copywriter. <coughs> I loved it, absolutely loved it. And I knew that this was what I was going to do. I was very successful. I came out here to Salt Lake, and for the next 15 or 20 years, I tried to get a job as a copywriter here in Salt Lake and was turned down every time mm -hmm. I tried. I went on to get a master's degree in mass communications and I knew I was going to be in advertising after that. I just knew it. I worked on it. I had an idea for advertising television news. It was revolutionary. Still haven't had the opportunity to do that. And local television news is pretty much irrelevant right now. After that, I went to a company called Bernard Halday. I don't know if any of you have heard about it, but he was a gentleman that helped people coming out of the service during the Second World War find work, started a company, spent $4,000 with a, an advisor over about three years' time, working on what I would do when I grew up. I got a hint when I went to an astrologer. <laughs> Thank you. 
And she indicated that there aren't any positions for me that exist. She pointed to this little arrow on the top of my chart, huh? up here at the top. And it indicated to her that I needed to create my own position, my own job. I couldn't go to the classified and find it there. I read a book a few years ago by the name of Synchronicity. Joseph Jaworski wrote the book indicating that people are all connected and that true leaders need to understand what needs to evolve in society and then have the courage to go out and make that happen. The problem is, how do you know what needs to evolve and then how do you make it happen? Recently, the last year or two, I've worked closely with a friend of ours who've been here before by the name of Dave Chatterley. Dave has worked with me as a mentor and coach, and he has really helped me a lot. And if there is anyone who would be interested in talking with him, I have some cards and he has a website. He's a fantastic person. Right now, I'm working on a documentary. This just sort of fell into my lap. It's not something that I went out and looked for. A friend of mine, a gentleman that I knew uh, when I was going to school up in Logan, was a doctor. It turned out that his brother-in-law was the number one top aide for Howard Hughes. I worked for Howard Hughes, my doctor friend up in Logan, for four years. From 1948 to 52 when he was going to med school, and then again as one of his rotating physicians from 1972 until Howard Hughes' death in 1976. He has a fascinating story to tell, and I believe it would be a great story to be told as a documentary. This just fell into my lap. The one thing that I've really learned from Dave, and it's taken me a long time to figure this out, is that I need to enjoy the journey. It's still going on. I don't really know still what I want to do when I grow up. But I'm going to enjoy the journey to get there. Thank you very much. For that.